going on, everybody? Let's talk about one of the best werewolf movies of the 80s, and that is Silver Bullet by Stephen King. Uh, screenplay by Stephen King and directed by Daniel Atias, who didn't direct anything else uh, movie-wise. He did a bunch of TV shows and episodes, but he never did movies again. So that's shocking. Like, this is good. So I'm surprised he never went on to direct more. Um, but the cast, we got Everett McGill from... The People Under the Stairs, which I reviewed recently. And uh, it also has Gary Busey, who's great. And you got Corey Haim, rest in peace, who's also a good child actor in this movie. This movie tells a story about a little kid who rides a silver bullet wheelchair and finds out that there is a a werewolf in his community. And when he finds out who it is, he has to convince his uncle, played by Gary Busey, to help him put an end to the werewolf curse. What I like about this movie is the opening. It opens with the full moon as the credits roll, and then we see this guy working at the train tracks, and we get a nice bloody decapitation. And I found out that it cuts away a little quick because the effect didn't actually work the way they wanted it to. We were supposed to see the headless body fall down and blood spurt out, but it didn't fall down, so they had to cut it, which is a shame knowing that now, but it still looks good what we got here. And so we know, even though this movie is focusing on kids, it's not going to have that uh, tone of a kid's movie. It's going to be bloody. And there are some good bloody kills in here. um, And some really messed up kills, too. Because one of them's pregnant. And a kid dies. I really like the relationship between uh, Red and Marty. The uncle-nephew relationship. He looks at him almost like the son he never had. Almost like a best friend also. He's very childish at heart. And he tells a bunch of uh, inappropriate jokes. I just really like some of the dialogue in the movie too. There's a lot of good dialogue. A lot of ad-libbing from Gary Busey. And just very good one-liners in here. It's kind of quotable. So I always like that in the movie. I like that the werewolf walks in this movie. It's not crawling around on all fours. I like a werewolf that stands up and kind of walks human-like. You know, part human, part wolf not on all fours like american werewolf in london i don't care for that stuff this is more my kind of werewolf uh i like that they don't uh abide by the full moon rules it can be any night i think this movie is also pretty atmospheric and it also feels like a slasher movie at times this is like the most slasher werewolf movie out there there's lots of pov shots people just getting picked off one by one they think there's a killer out there not a werewolf and it just feels very slasher, especially when you got like the POV of him climbing up the trellis to get the girl. Very Black Christmas. You also get a decent transformation sequence uh, towards the end where where the werewolf goes from werewolf to human. And also has a good flow overall, a good pace. It really flies by. There's enough action in here and it gets ramped up towards the end. You get a nice uh, you know, conf- confrontation towards the end. And the only thing I could really nitpick here is that confrontation towards the end. I wish they would have just milked it out a little longer, let that scene breathe a bit more, just have some more there going on. I just feel feel like it ended a little too soon. It should have uh, there should have been more of a chase around the house. I'm also not a fan of the look of the werewolf. It just looks almost like a bear at times, and it looks very rubbery. It looks like a man in a suit also at times. And it's just, it doesn't look good. And I think that's why they use so many close-up shots for the most part. And maybe that's why they took the slasher POV approach. Because they knew that the werewolf didn't look good. And I think the producer wasn't a fan of the werewolf look either. But final thoughts, I really enjoyed it. I think it's got a terrific terrific cast, some good performances, some decent transformation effects. Uh, Not the best looking werewolf, but still an entertaining ride and... I feel like this movie doesn't really get as much love as it deserves because it, it's in the shadows of, of uh, American Werewolf in London and the Howling. Everyone just wants to look at those as the pinnacle, the best werewolf movies, and this one just kind of gets pushed aside. But I think this is more entertaining and a better werewolf movie to me than those two, if you ask me. So when it comes to Silver Bullet, I say that you add this one to your collection, go out and buy it. All right, time for, I guess, a very, very brief spoiler discussion. There's not really a whole lot to talk about here. I mean, usually spoiler discussions, I try to just point out stupid things that happen in the movie or 
nitpicks that I couldn't talk about before, but there's not a whole lot to say here. Uh, this movie has a spider scare. We don't usually get those. Usually it's a cat scare, but in this one we got a spider scare. And so then, yeah, the priest, I actually knew it was going to be the priest, so I guess I can talk about that here. Everett McGill. It's funny because the first time I watched this movie, when I first saw his character before he was even introduced, I was like, it's going to be that guy. Because you know it's going to be the priest. It's got to be like the least obvious one. Like whoever you would least expect is the one who's going to be the werewolf. And when I saw the priest, I was like, it's going to be the priest. And I was right. Uh, that one body, when they're in like the fog, there's something in the fog. And when that body comes out of the fog, it looks like a dummy. It, it looked pretty bad. But that's the Blu-ray transfer helping it look worse. Sometimes Blu-rays are a curse and not the best option. Sometimes you need that VHS quality to make the effects look better. And, you know, we get this mob justice going on, kind of like in Halloween 4. They all get together. Come on, Earl! And they go out there and get killed. And the priest is very much against it, which is the biggest clue that he's... The werewolf and then you get that dream sequence which i feel like is another major clue that he's the werewolf and because nobody in town thinks it's a werewolf everybody thinks that there's just a maniac out there and the fact that he's dreaming about werewolves tells you that he's the werewolf he's dreaming about them and but that was a really odd scene kind of funny and all these uh, people turning into werewolves at the church and shit and they said that the accident at the beginning was an accident and I'm not sure how I mean I guess they think he fell in front of the train and then his head got ran over something like that going on and then you know a kid gets killed we got that bloody kite I like the way the werewolf is revealed like who it is when you know he shoots the firework at the werewolf's eye and then they're looking around town trying to find out who's missing the eyeball and then the priest has the eye patch on him and then we get this really good intense scene where uh, he's chasing him down the bridge with, you know, it's a wheelchair chase. And you don't get too many of those car versus wheelchair chase. And the wheelchair in this movie is awesome. It almost makes me wish I was paralyzed just so I could have an excuse to get one. Gary Busey in this movie keeps going back and forth between like being on his nephew's side and then not believing him, a skeptic and then not a skeptic. He, you know, he sees the paint on his uh, silver bullet and he's like, oh shit, I guess it is the priest. But then he, you know, he goes as far as to get a silver bullet made from his necklace. And then at the last minute decides, I don't believe you anymore. It's like, make up your mind, buddy. But I guess it's un understandable in a way. Um, but yeah, what kind of dumbass falls asleep with a gun in his hand and a cigarette in the other? I mean, you're asking to accidentally shoot yourself in your sleep or light the house on fire. And so, yeah, then we get the whole final confrontation, and I wish it just would have lasted maybe a bit more, maybe just milk that out some more, extend it a bit, or, you know, maybe kill somebody, have, have Gary Busey die, have an emotional gut punch of the ending, but instead it's just so cheery and happy instead, which is okay every now and then, but sometimes I like a darker ending, and more of an emotional impact, but there's no emotional scene like that in this movie, maybe that's what's missing. And, and then the whole, like, one last scare thing happens. You know, the werewolf's dead. Just like in Misery, you gotta have that one last scare. I guess it's the Stephen King thing here. The killer, the werewolf is back for one last scare. Very not necessary. Uh, so those are my thoughts on Silver Bullet. Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below. Is it your favorite werewolf movie? Favorite Stephen King? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, Alpha Fantasy.